I'm Mark the Duck with my super stylish hat and I love a good take today. Hopefully you do too, otherwise you've kind of clicked on the wrong video. Now the the classic tape delay is probably the Roland RE201. So today I have three emulations of said Roland. I can't afford the real thing and even though they sold a lot of them back in the day, they are kind of scarce and the people that have them are not so inclined to letting them go. So emulation is a pretty good way to go and well, I like a good emulation. It's no uh, take trouble, no uh, maintenance and all that. First off we have the Boss RE20, which is basically made by Roland themselves, Boss Roland, you know. It's based on the custom emulation technology, which isn't new, but it was actually pretty impressive back in the day and it still holds up nicely. This bad boy barely needs an introduction. It's the Strymon El Capistan, which is very used. Uh, both of these are kindly on loan from my friends at Boss Sound, which is my local gear store, and they're all over Scandinavia. I get a good service and they let me play with things sometimes, so uh, thumbs up for them. And if you're a Scandinavian, it's a good place to shop. The last contestant is a Nox Tape Core Deluxe. And in this company, it's kind of the poor cousin. You know, unlike the other two, it's not on loan. I actually bought this a bit on a whim. It costs only a fourth of the boss and only a fifth of the Strymon. So, in comparison, it's really cheap. And overall, it's not expensive either. But uh, I actually have a, the Nox uh, Mod Core, which is a bunch of... Uh, modulation effects and that's impressive for its cost. So I kind of took a leap of faith with this one and actually it's not disappointing. But more on that later. I think they all emulate the Roland R201. Boss says it's uh, straight out. The Nox, well, with the design, you, you're not really in doubt, but it's not an official emulation like the Boss. And the El Capistan, well, it's not exactly trying to emulate it, but the overall feature set is very Roland RE201. And sound-wise, it's not a massive stretch either. Mostly because, like the other two, has an emulated spring reverb. Because the original Roland had an actual spring reverb inside it, which was part of the whole Space Echo magic. So, my guess is they've been looking quite intently at it. But you get some more uh, tone shaping effects uh, than the, you do in the other two. For instance, you get the manual bow and flood, or you get tape age, stuff like that. So it, in that respect, it's more uh, flexible. But perhaps uh, I should get into the differences, because uh, this is both uh, the introduction for a bunch of uh, sound videos, but it's also kind of the conclusion and condensing it into one. The first thing uh, to note is the, uh, they all got stereo outputs, but uh, the bus is the only one with a true stereo input on the dual jacks. The Strymon has a single input, with, which is normally a mono, but if you open it and move a jumper, then you get TIS st stereo. The effect itself is still uh, it's something about its sums, the incoming audio, but only uh, in the digital side and then creates the effect from the sound mono signal but it sounds quite stereo and the stereo input is kept dry stereo throughout so that's completely unaffected by the digital side which is also something to note it's always completely clean the bus isn't the clean through is affected the second you enable the effect the nox is mono in only there's uh, no stereo option but it still has the stereo out because the reverb and to some extent also the delay has some stereo width. In that respect it's it's kind of the poor cousin. But then again, the cause. With the bus, what you see is what you get. It's a nice feature set, it's very closely related to the Harry 201. You get the controls you see and on the back you've got a dry kill switch. The Strymon El Capistan is a bit different. If you hold down both the pedal switches you get five additional functions from the five knobs. Again, it actually has a lot more flexibility than the boss. 
Knox uh, in turn have gone a different route. It has the fewest knobs, but it has mini USB input and a software on the computer where you can update it and you can control it and you can actually target it with MIDI and stuff like that. You actually get more controls with the software than you do on the boss, but it's still not quite as flexible as the Strymon. Also with the Strymon, if you turn mix all the way up, you get a dry kill. With the Nux, you need the software to dry kill. So again, it's not but cost. They also use uh, pretty much the same tape head configuration. The Strymon uses these two uh, small toggles to choose the tape head configuration, whereas the Boss and the Nux got a mode selector, more akin to the original uh, Roland. All in all, it works out pretty much the same. Uh, I'd say the Strymon is a tad more flexible because it has both a setting with a single head for uh, variable tape speed and a setting with a variable uh, tape head placement where you can sort of sweep the placement of the tape head and uh, they act differently so that's a nice effect. They all three have three emulated playheads but only the boss and the Nox can enable all three at the same time. The Capistan only got the one or two at a time in different configurations, not all three at a time. So that's the one single thing where it's not actually more flexible than the other two. Soundwise, all three are pretty impressive, but I have to say with this Ryman, you pay a bit more, but you also get more. It's, it's a bit more smooth, it's a bit more forgiving, with the boss and the Nox, sometimes I got this gritty distortion-y something. Well, it didn't sound as, uh, to me at least, as analog as I would have liked. They all have the limits, but I felt that uh, there was a, it was uh, easier to avoid the limit with the Strymon. And for instance, it, on all three, if you crank the repeat setting, it goes into this self-feeding, self-oscillating thing. Which is actually pretty cool, but especially the boss and the Nox also will kind of overload and overdo it. Whereas on the Strymon, it keeps being kind of smooth and manageable. It it sounds a bit better. the The reverb is also better, and I think in part that's well simply the fact that it's what it is, but it's more expensive. But I also think the constraints of not emulating the original Roland directly have let them do a bit more and it's paid off. Uh, something to note, the boss can run on the 6 double A's and the Nox comes with a 9 volt basic uh, battery, you know the type. The Strymon can't run on batteries, it's, uh, it does need a power supply of some sort. Then you can get a, one of these power supplies with an actual battery and but it doesn't have the option in itself. So that's something so to keep in mind. So overall, I'm calling the El Capistan the winner. But the big surprise is actually the Nox. Despite being so much cheaper, it can actually fight the, the other two. It won't win, but the fact that it can get in the ring in the first place, that's, that's actually impressive. And like I said, uh, I have another Nox pedal. And it's the same deal. It won't win anything, but it's good enough that you won't do it just... You actually end up using it. In the case of the other Nox pedal, I use the chorus effect a lot. I did have a TC Corona chorus on test some while back. And, well, I was poor at the time, so wasn't keeping it. And, and the Nox uh, kind of filled in the shoe without ever being quite as good, but good enough. This was also hard to see uh, which one I would use on uh, my next uh, Dark Games. Once I'm done here, a little later, I'll be recording Dark Games 04. And, well, it's gonna be the El Capistan that graces that track. So, that's the winner. And that's a big surprise and a lot for the money. And the boss, well, it's really nice. And the fact that there's no hidden features, there's no software babble, always hate that but well considering the form factor and the price I can't really complain it's it's really the the no bullshit solution it's the one you get if you just want it to work and work and work and not have to open it to move a jumper and not have hidden settings or anything it just does what it says and it does it well this has been an interesting test and 
again, thanks to for some for lending me these two.